Hello everybody and welcome to our Q&A session with Steve. So we've had some questions through on our Facebook channel. So the first one I've got here is from Danny and Danny asks, hope all is well. Steve identified a pliosaur tooth for me once, which I greatly appreciated. I would love to know what this bone from the Kimridge clay could be. So Danny sent through three images. Um, each, each of the pictures is held within his hand to give it some scale. So if I pass it on to you, Steve, have a look what and see. What yeah, it's just it a is. partial limb bone, probably a, the distal end of a plesiosaur limb bone, humerus or a femur. But that's about all I can say because it, it is literally not preserved that well. It probably came from an inland quarry somewhere like Abingdon or where, wherever, but that's all I can add to that. But it's just a, a lump of a plesiosaur limb bone. Okay. Thank you. So it would probably be good to know, Danny, if you're able to come back to us and, and, and say whereabouts you did find this from. So let, let us know. Um, and then the second question we have is from Martin Pearson. So here are some images of his finds and he says, Hi, I have a few small things found in the Oxford clay near Weymouth. See the pictures. So he sent through some images of um, a shark tooth. He says he thinks it's from Notodan Notodanus? Yeah, Notodanus, yeah. Yep, a vertebra, possibly from um, a ray or a hybridant shark. <laughs> And yep. some lobster pieces. Lobster um, claws, bits of lobster, yeah. yeah. they're yep. very great. You can actually yeah. see that sort of yeah. stuff, can't you? Yeah. And also some spine or plant pieces. And he asks, how should I best preserve them? Well, none of them are pyritic, so they don't need any special sort of environment to keep them in. So horses for courses, put them in a sort of box or whatever you want to and do but fine. there's no yeah they're not going to fall they're apart no no okay. not at all so no. what kind of localities along the jurassic coast do you tend to find fossils that do pyrotize which ones tend to need more care um well lime regis where you get the pyrotic ammonite yeah. they'll, they'll degrade some of them you can keep for i don't know years and then all of a sudden they'll just, they'll go, just break down um, yeah just break down but then the idea with that is to keep them really really dry so put them in a even a Tupperware box or something like that, but that yeah. doesn't keep the oxygen out really. Um, so, what do we do specifically here for our all our stuff in the all collection? our stuff is pyritic. What do we do? Keep humidity down to forty yeah. percent. So everything's climate controlled, in those yeah. Areas, but you wouldn't bring it? something, yeah. you know, from Kimridge, especially a lump of shale, straight into a forty percent sort no. of dry environment because it just shrink and crack very quickly. Yeah. In fact, you can hear it sometimes cracking that oh, quick. Wow. So everything in the reserve collection is humidity controlled as well, isn't it? Yep. In fact, better than the displays in some ways, because all we've got there is just um, arts or which is conditioned oh, yeah. for 40%. But the only trouble is with our cases, they're not completely airtight. And so therefore, we've always got to keep an eye on this humidity problem yeah. here. And so the art saw sucks in the moisture. Yeah. But you, what you can do then is you can recondition the art saw, but it's, it's quite a long job and... To take all this off and recondition it is yeah okay so the so the answer is no it doesn't need any sort of special um conditions to keep okay. that but the last two items yeah so he's these got, ones these ones well the, i haven't got a clue to be honest there's another guy a friend of mine who probably may um give an idea what these yeah because they, they, they look are. almost like limpets which is what no no um, no martin no, says not, but no who knows no they're quite strange. quite interesting but again yeah there's nothing I can sort of add to this because I've never seen these things before and I haven't got a clue what they really represent. Okay. Might be worth perhaps Martin asking on um, some of the Facebook groups no. of Dorset. No, 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 no. Probably better to get hold of the Natural History Museum, send the oh, image wow. up there and they'll come back and give you an answer. There we go. Excellent. So, yep, contact maybe the Natural History Museum on a couple of those finds to see what, see what they think. Great. Okay, so... Uh, third question is from Jeff Mendes, and he asks, Hello, Mr. Etches. Can you please tell me what this is? Now, this was found in Kimmage. Now, it's a little bit difficult to identify this is because of the lighting of the photograph, and also there isn't anything in the photograph to give it some There scale. is. You can see there's a brick at the back. If you'd like us to identify your um, fossil finds, the best thing to do is take a really good in-focus picture of them, 
add something in the photograph to give it some scale, ideally a ruler. Um, and if you can also let us know where you found it, the mm. locality of but, your find, that also helps. But it looks to be probably a large oyster. But that's yeah, that's what, what I thought. But I better than it. that, when we're open, bring these things in because yeah. it's always better to look at them Definitely. So we like to uh, hold our Fossil Friday here at the museum when we're open. So this is the day where if you've got any fossil finds, bring them down to us at the museum. And generally, Steve is always here on a Friday and he can take a look at them in person and hopefully identify them for you. Yeah, I'm not always in every Friday. No, but the other thing as well is if you are thinking of coming down for Let Fossil Friday, yeah, send us an email to info yeah. at theetchescollection.org or give us a call on 01929 270000 just to ask if Steve is going to be about and then, if he is, pop on down with yeah. the signs. It doesn't have to be a Friday, but any time. Yeah, even if you're coming down to visit the museum and you'd like us to identify something for you or if you've been for a trip down the bay and you find something, Bring it on in, let us have a look and we'll be able to let you know hopefully what it is you've, you've found. Sometimes, you, you know, visitors have come to the museum and they've found some quite amazing little things. Do you remember the girl that found the little fish tooth? That was quite cute. Yeah. And there was, what were the other finds that we've had from people that have been down to the bay and then come back to oh, the Well, they weren't on the trip, but there was that girl who found that ichthyosaur vertebra first off. Yeah. And then, I don't use that on the trip, then she found a plesiosaur vertebra that fell out the cliff so yeah she was yeah. quite pleased and I think since then she's found other bones that have fallen out the cliff so it's always well worth looking in the shingle and definitely yeah. you never you know, never know. Yeah. yeah you never know what you might find